Hi and welcome back to Scotty's Tech.info. I'm Scotty with my co-host Cletus and today I want to review a rather popular and cheap uh, battery tab spot welder. Now, okay, first of all, real quick, what the heck is a battery tab spot welder? Well, as we know, lithium ion batteries power darn near everything and many battery packs such as those in power tools such as this one, there are two batteries in this handle, or for example, um, a Makita battery pack for an 18 volt screwdriver, even electric cars, uh, many of them use battery packs that are filled with these. This is an 18650 lithium ion cell. Uh, they vary between you know, 3.7, 4.2 volts. And you basically take a bunch of these cells and you pack them together in a box or the handle of a power tool. And uh, you, you have to weld them all together. You have to attach them all together because uh, these battery packs provide lots and lots of juice. But it's basically a collection of a bunch of these little cells that provides that juice. Now, um, normally what happens is when you want to attach a bunch of these cells together to create a big battery pack, you do tab welding. And tab welding looks something like this. So what happens is you take a strip of metal, such as this one, which is usually nickel-plated steel, and you place it on top of the battery, and then you see you have these two little electrodes, and those electrodes are actually what's going to weld the tab to the battery. So what happens is um, you, the, the tabs emit a pulse. It's a relatively low voltage but high current, and it's a very, very short pulse because if you take those two probes and you put them on the tab on top of the head of the battery, uh, you get a whole lot of current passing through and it's just going to melt the, the tab and possibly overheat the battery and destroy it. This is why we don't solder these 18650 cells together. You use tab welding because you don't want to heat lithium-ion batteries because they tend to become damaged and even explode, which is not pleasant. So you do tab welding. Now, uh, what happens is after this, there's basically no current, no current, no current, and a very short pulse of a whole lot of current. It, well, it can be 12, 30, 40, 50 volts. Very, no current, no current, and then a short little pulse, and that short little pulse will cause a little spark between those two uh, copper-looking electrodes on there, and you end up with basically this. Uh, as you can see, uh, this uh, battery has a tab on top of it, and it's been uh, spot-welded three times. So where the two probes are touching, it, it literally welds the metal, the top of the battery, to the metal of the tab, and this serves two purposes. You have your metal tab which is pressed into the top and that makes good electrical contact and also you have the the in this case six little welds which is uh, very strong and it's a good electrical connection and it holds the tab uh, very firmly against the end of the battery and it prevents things like vibration or thermal expansion and contraction from loosening that connection. It also serves another purpose which is that this takes up hardly any space at all. So if you're making, say, an electric car or a power tool battery and you want to pack a lot of these cells in, uh, by using tab welding you can minimize the amount of space required for your battery pack. And of course this is an example of sort of a completed small battery pack. You just weld them all together and Bob's your uncle. Okay, so that's what battery tab welding is, but how do you actually do battery tab welding? Let's say you have a power tool uh, and you the battery pack is dead and you decide you're going to be all smart and you're going to replace these little 18650 cells inside that battery pack because a new one costs 70 bucks. So you're going to save some money. You can buy these for a few dollars a piece, even on Amazon. So you decide to save some money and do it yourself. Well, you're going to need something like this, which is a battery tab welder. Now, this one is about $200. There are other ones. Um, you can go on oh, AliExpress, eBay, uh, even on Amazon. You can find battery tab welders. They usually start about $130. Um, this one, as I said, is like $230 or so, and they go up to over $3,000. Those are, of course, the very, very fancy tab welders. Uh, now, these are usually, they're okay. Uh, if you're mass-producing batteries, probably they're not going to last very long. Uh, but obviously, you're not going to spend $130 or $230 for a battery tab welder so that you can save $70 on a new battery pack for your power tool. Uh, which is why I don't have a battery spot welder until now. Because what happened was uh, a couple weeks ago 
uh, I got an email from Banggood.com and they said I could buy this bad boy for a whopping $16.99. <laughs> now I know what you're thinking, if it looks too good to be true, it probably is. Well, I decided to find out, and in fact these are apparently very popular because I ordered it on, I believe, August 8th. Uh, it is currently, uh, we're about midway through September. And uh, after I ordered it, they said, oh, sorry, uh, due to high demand, we're out of stock. There was like a two-week delay. They finally packed it up and shipped it to me, and I just got it a few days ago. So, right, I figured for 16 bucks, if I can get a little, you know, for, for the amount of tab welding I do, which is not a whole lot, I thought, you know, 16 bucks, if it works, that's pretty cool, right? So, right, let's take a look at it, and I'll explain a little bit about how it works, and then we'll give it a test drive. So this is our battery tab welder. Uh, you can see on the back here, you have some interesting text. It says, this controller is mainly used for battery repair and small amount of battery welding, perfect for me. Power supply can use 12 volt car battery or 3S 40 to 70C 5 amp hour lithium battery, mainly used for welding 0.1 to 0.12 nickel strip. Okay, and you can see it says, portable transistor mini spot welder. Uh, you also see over here it says weld switch, that's this little input right here, and this is the power button, this little guy right here. And on this side, you have your plus and minus, which you connect to a battery. Uh, I had to actually crimp these little terminals on here. And then the other side is the actual output. You have a little control screen here. And these are the actual probes, which you will press onto the battery to do the welding. Now, of course, you need uh, preferably a 12 volt, at least 5 amp hour battery. So I'm using this guy which is simply an APC, it's for a UPS, a battery backup, and this battery is 12 volts and about 7.2 amp hours, so it's more than adequate to power this guy. Uh, okay, so let me plug this guy in and... Okay, so here are our probes and here's our little dude, so let's turn him on. He makes a whole lot of noise, and you can see it says weld energy, input 12.4 volts, and weld is auto. If you press the square button, that changes it to the manual mode. That's what this uh, this input switch on the side here is for. They give you a little connector, and you can have like a foot pedal if you want. Otherwise, you put it on auto mode, and basically, um, when you touch these two probes to the top of the battery, when they're both in contact, it beeps, and after like a few seconds, it actually shoots the the current pulse and the weld happens. So that's the auto mode. And I was too lazy to make a foot switch, so we're going to use auto mode. The energy is variable between 10E and 99, and usually I put it up to uh, about 40 because uh, the reviews on banggood.com said, oh, if you want to do tab welding, you better do about 40. So, okay, that's what I did. Um, I did three spot welds, and it actually worked, sure enough, uh, at 10. And 30, uh, the the energy was a little bit low. The welds, they were very small. It wasn't a very good weld. So I kicked it up to 30, tried that, then kicked it up to 40, and that at 40 seemed to actually be a good value. So, right, let us see what happens here. I'm going to have to set this up so you can see what I'm doing. So we're going to take our little cell there. We're going to put this on here, and now you have to be careful not to touch these leads together if you don't want to. Uh, so what I'm going to do... The, the, the leads are not really long enough for this, but like this. So I'm going to touch one, and then I'm going to touch the other. Wow, that's not at all what was supposed to happen. Woo! That was fun! Okay. Yeah. Let's disconnect that now. Okay, so, um, as you can see, that's not at all what was supposed to happen. What was supposed to happen is, after you touch it, as I said, 
the unit beeps, and then after a few seconds, there's a tiny little spark. What's happening there is that uh, this is my fourth or so weld attempt with this guy, and it appears to have failed because the current should not be flowing through destroying uh, the electrode like that. Uh, of course, it, it, it welded, but it's there's not a, a short pulse of current. It's actually just dumping the current right through. Okay, so that's uh, actually kind of a bummer. Um, right, let's get... <laughs> well, it was working. I was happy. All right, let's see. Let's investigate real quick. We can get our battery out of the way here. This pulls off. Indeed it does. There's our little control board. So that's kind of cute. Hmm. Okay, so it looks like what's actually happening here is these are these are the battery leads on this side. So the positive terminal of the battery just passes right on through to the, the positive welding probe, and then the negative of the battery actually goes to here, and these are, okay, we can see, I think that's probably the little control pin on the end there. So basically the positive passes through and the negative is supposed to be switched by these guys. These are basically MOSFETs. I think the, the documentation on the Banggood site claimed that they are 300 amp MOSFETs. I'm a little bit skeptical. Uh, it doesn't look like there's any... I can't see any... Ah, oh, there, there is some writing on there. It's really hard to see. So I can look those up and see if they actually are what they claim to be. But basically, uh, what happens is the, the positive just passes right through from the battery, the negative goes here, and then this controller board is actually going to turn these off. These are basically five switches. So what should happen is the controller board, when you touch the two probes to the battery, the controller board is going to sense that, and then it's going to keep these switched off until it's ready to give its pulse, and then it turns these, these five switches on and off really quickly, which gives you that short little pulse. But what's actually happening is these are basically an open circuit, so they're basically shorted, so you don't get a pulse, and yeah. So either these these MOSFETs are dead, or the controller board is actually toast and not doing what it's supposed to do, but... Ah, well... Shucks. <sighs> well, there you have it. Uh, weld number four, and it went kaput. I suppose I should have expected as much from a $16.99 battery spot welder, but as I said, I did three welds before making this video and I was quite happy with it. I thought, ooh, wow, this is cool. Um, yeah, it doesn't seem to last very long. Um, I, I, I did actually read all the reviews and it got 4.95 out of five stars before I bought it, which is one of the reasons that I did get it. Um, there were a few comments where the, the sellers were saying, oh, you didn't use a, a hefty enough battery, but as I said, you need uh, 9 to 12 volts and uh, 5 amp hours or more. This is 7.2 amp hours. That should be more than enough. Um, yeah, so uh, I guess you should avoid getting the portable mini spot welder for $16 because uh, if you need to do more than three welds, you're going to be in trouble. Well, at least we got to have some fun with electricity and burn some things, and, um, yeah. For more Techie Tips, see scottystech.info. Thanks for watching. See you next time.